Welcome to Top Shift 133 Update 18 Review. With Frontier's turbulent performance over the last couple of years, at the beginning of the year there was an expectation in the community that Elite Dangerous would be placed into maintenance mode at best or completely shut down. This feeling was reinforced when it appeared that many familiar names associated with the development team were leaving due to the cuts the firm was making. So with the announcement of three major updates for Elite Dangerous in 2024, Frontier gave the community a pleasant surprise. The first of these was Update 18, which was released at the end of February and introduced mechanics which could lead to the end of the Thargoid War. The schedule has been changed with the release of the Type 8 update. Update numbers have been dropped and replaced with named updates like there was before. So to hear about future updates, including the very welcome changes to engineering, please click on the like and subscribe button for future updates. The main feature of Update 18 is the ability for players to attack and destroy Thargoid Titans. So far, the community has managed to take down Tenaris, Ligong, Oya, Haddad, Indra, and the Thord Titan was destroyed very recently. There are only two Titans left, leaving the community wondering what's next. Taking down a Titan sounds simple, but much more difficult in practice, and it makes good use of existing mechanics. There are three stages involved to destroying a Titan. Though no pilot can single-handedly take one of these motherships down, the new mechanics make players feel that their contribution is counted. The first stage, of course, is to make a Titan vulnerable to attack. A single Titan controls a number of systems. Once the community reduces those systems to three or less, the Titan becomes vulnerable, allowing players to directly attack the mothership. This leads on to the second stage. Players can attack the mothership as long as they, their ship has caustic sink launchers, a field jammer, the new Guardian nanite torpedo, and of course anti-thargoid weapons that can punch. It's also recommended that you have a cold running ship, i.e. it runs at less than 20% heat, so Thargoids can't detect you while you are approaching the mothership. Here the player must perform three tasks to damage the mothership. Firstly, they have to get to the Titan using the combination of the caustic sink launcher and the field jammer equipment, as they've done in previous updates. Once in, the player must remain hidden until they see the Titan expel heat from its vents. The second task here is to make the Titan expose its heat and heart core. Now this is done by blocking as many heat vents as possible using the nanite torpedoes before the vents close up. For each vent blocked, the heart will be exposed for five seconds. So the more vents you manage to block, the more damage you'll be able to do to the Titan's hearts. This leaves, of course, the third task. Once the vents close, the player has 5 to 15 seconds to get underneath the Titan. The heat core becomes exposed as the Titan tries to expel the excess heat. Before the heat core retracts, the player can hammer it with as many anti thargo weapons as possible, uh, with the enhanced anti xeno missiles doing the most damage. After the core retracts, the Titan will fire its Taurus effect, disabling and damage any player's ships leaving it vulnerable to defending scouts and interceptors. The player has to escape the, to the asteroid field before this happens. As long as you damage the core, and that has a knock-on effect to the Thargoid heart in general. So if a player, and anyone else in the instance, manages to destroy that core, it does significant damage to the Thargoid heart, although a new core is used in the next run. From this point on, it's repeated as many times as possible to contribute to the heart damage, until all eight hearts are destroyed. At that point, the third and final stage occurs. The Titan enters a 24-hour meltdown period. Players can still get to the Titan and do one of two things. They can either rescue as many humans that are still trapped on the Titan and take them to a rescue ship, or they can pick off evacuating Thargoid ships for a vast amount of money. After 24 hours, the Titan explodes. The explosion... See what happens. I must admit, I'm, it, I'm just looking at people. Oh, here we go. Oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, back up, back up.
Oh, we're getting thrown out the cloud. June leaves behind an impenetrable caustic cloud, but after a couple of weeks this dissipates allowing you to explore the wreckage. Here you can find either new materials or human escape pods, but you do have to avoid pirate encounters, scavenger encounters and the occasional Thargoid patrol which returns to the site of their previous mothership. These new materials, as collected as part of a community gold, has led to one of the most significant gameplay updates in years, the SCO drive. It's a new version of the frameshift drive, and although it has a slightly shorter jump range than the standard drive, it has the supercruise overdrive feature. One of the issues with Elite Dangerous is the massive size of some of the systems you'd encounter. It used to take between 5 to 20 minutes to traverse a system which without any NPC encounters felt like a wasted time. With the SCO drive the overdrive feature boosts the ship's speed by up to 10 so what was a 20 minute flight can only take 2 to 4 minutes. In addition it means that ships can get into orbit a lot faster as well thus cutting down launch time. The downside is that the SCO does not fly in a straight line, so the player has to make a lot of course corrections, but it's a small price to pay for the reduced travel time. And this is where the new ship, the Python Mark II, comes in. The first new ship in for five years is an excellent dogfighter. It looks good and can be heavily armed, but its main advantage is that players don't have to course correct when using the SCO drive, a feature which will be coming to all of the new ships. The final part of the update are changes to the store, with most of the cosmetic items doubling in price and the introduction of new paid for ship builds. These are ship builds which are available for purchase with real world money via ARCs, in addition to early access to the Python Mark II and the new Type 8 also being purchasable by ARCs. These new ships do become free to the community after three months. So, how does this update stack up with the rest of the Thargo War content? Although attacking the Titan is not as much fun as dealing with the Spire sites, it is very close. Although there is some frustration getting to the Titan, the actual bombing the vents and the core mechanics are engaging. And although it sounds like a repetitive task, there's enough variety in Thargoid adversaries to make every run feel slightly different. And the whole process has a massive climatic feel. The fact that Frontier have turned down the number of Glade encounters has helped significantly. 
However, there are a couple of issues, especially if you're in a big player group or playing in open, when there's a lot of other players in the instance. Because of this, the ideal number of players uh, to maximize your effort appears to be about four, with one player performing the vent bombing run while the others hitting the core when it's exposed. Beside these issues, attacking the Thargoid Titan is an astounding experience and I'd highly recommend participating if you have the chance. And as this is ship-only content, you've got access to it in VR, which enhances the encounter to another level. However, it is the addition of the SCO drive which makes this one of the most important updates for years. The new drive eliminates two of the biggest time sinks in Elite Dangerous and allows players access to content they would normally consider doing because it would be too far away. For example, in a typical hour-long play session, I used to do three, maybe four missions in a push. With the ships using the SCO drive, I'm able to do ten missions within that same hour. The community has been used to gritting its teeth and raw dogging the longer journey times in the past, so this is a significant change to the accessibility of the game. There have been accusations that the game has gone pay to win with the new ship builds and early access in the store, and while there is an element of that with the Python Mark II and Type 8, neither ship has an automatic I win button, and the new ship builds don't infer any advantage over an experienced player in their current ships. It's obvious that FDev have decided that this is the best way to fund the game going forward, and it's a small price to pay for the continuation of the game. The doubling of the price of cosmetic items has taken a small amount of shine off this release, but despite that I would still rate update 18 as a 9.5 out of 10. It's the most significant update in Elite Dangerous for years, and has given the community a confidence that Elite is here to stay.